Ever since early man discovered fire, human survival has been largely based on our ability to control it. Fire has always been used to provide warmth and light, which allows us to use it for a variety of purposes. Our ancestors used fire to cook their food, helping them to get more energy out of plants and animals. More recently, the Industrial Revolution led humans to use fire for energy, using the combustion of fossil fuels to create massive power grids. The effect of fire on humans is clear, but what about its effect on nature? Fire is important to a number of forest ecosystems across the southeastern United States. From Florida to North Carolina, a wide variety of ecosystems depend on large-scale disturbance events in the form of fire to remain healthy. For years, the United States has chosen to suppress wildfire due to these destructive abilities. Is it, you know, people don't really understand forests. It's not the first thing they think about, and they don't understand it ecologically, they don't understand it financially. Fire would be seen ecologically as a catastrophic disturbance of the system. Disturbance is, is one of the dynamics that allows forests to renew themselves. And many forest systems are frankly dependent upon fire and associated disturbance um, in order to actually seed themselves. Different forests are affected by fire differently. The natural cycle of wildfire for a certain forest is known as its fire regime. For example, longleaf pine forests found across the southeastern U.S. rely on frequent low-intensity fires. As a result, species of plant are dependent on fire, and fire suppression has caused a rapid decline in herb diversity. In addition to the overall loss of biodiversity, a lack of fires can increase forest floor coverage and fuel buildup. Forests who grow up, um, they might get over mature and die or have some mortality or insects and might, might kill off parts of it. The dead stuff becomes fuel, okay? Over time, as that happens, fuel accumulates and it gets a fuel load. And when you have the right conditions, being uh, oxygen, fuel and a source of ignition, fires happen. This buildup increases the threat of a dangerous and uncontrollable fire breaking out, threatening humans and wildlife. Fires been excluded from the system and fires then have become much more catastrophic and less predictable. Good evening, everyone, from the virtual middle of a firestorm here on this hilltop home of the Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley. We can see fire in several directions around us. These grounds and the library's treasured history spared thanks to a relentless aerial assault by water dropping tankers and choppers. The incredibly powerful Santa Ana winds this region had braced for came with a fury overnight pushing flames up hillsides and forcing thousands to flee their homes. Named the Easy Fire for the street near where it began, it has proven to be anything but easy, as I witnessed all day on the front lines. To get a more local understanding of the importance of fire to forest management, we took a trip into the Duke Forest. The risk of wildfire here, again, as opposed to out west, is really a lot different just because of our, our, our annual average precipitation, for example. And the fact that we manage our forests, um, and I would say most of the forests that we manage along the edges, you know, we are, we're actively ensuring that those, those, those stands are quite healthy. There aren't these lots of dead standing trees out there. Um, there's not a lot of dry material, kindling, if you will, you know, on the forest floor. Though the current climate of the region prevents any large scale wildfire activity in the Duke Forest, the region was historically host to regular fire. Native Americans used fire to maintain grasslands and prevent crowding which ensured the old growth of larger trees, such as oak and hickory trees, which support a greater host of wildlife through their acorns and nuts. 
the absence of fire in the Duke Forest specifically has had an impact on oak regeneration and is changing the forest itself. We're actually seeing a shift to different species types and climate change, invasive plant species, fire suppression, a, a, a mix of things that are going on. Um, but we're using prescribed fire and others are too to see if fire in the oak system will help oaks come back a little bit. Understanding how forests are predicted to change and finding ways to incorporate natural cycles of fire where necessary is important in the sustainable management of a wide variety of forest resources and ecosystem services for the future. A 2019 study by Phil et al. states that natural fires are started by a combination of dry weather, cured fuel, and high lightning frequencies. They found that in certain parts of Texas and Louisiana, the dry season starts 54 days earlier than it did just 120 years ago. Furthermore, much of the southeast now has a dry season ending roughly two months later, as shown on this graph of dry season and lightning occurrence in Florida and southern Louisiana. This creates a larger overlap between the dry season and times of high lightning occurrence, suggesting that high precipitation cannot keep Durham safe forever. One such resource is the wide variety of wood and building material for the timber, lumber, and paper industries. We actively manage our pine areas, and essentially what we're doing there is just keeping those areas in a rotation of pine trees, and so that we're selling into that pine saw timber market here in the southeast. We're actually looking to burn an area that we just cut, we just harvested, and we want to burn that area in order to reduce the slash that's on the ground. It'll make it a better, more productive planting site because we do plan to plant that area with, with new pine trees. The fire will also help return nutrients to the soil pretty quickly. Um, so all of that, you know, the slash and things that are decomposing, uh, that process will actually go a lot quicker and some nutrients will be returned to the soil. So sometimes we use fire as a site preparation tool as part of our timber management practices. Another important change that forest management will have to make is the incorporation of fire in forest ecosystem. People understand the stable system, even though stability is defined with some variability in terms of fire happening. I think that is becoming more and more accepted. The sustainability of forests across the country, and specifically in the southeast, will have to include fire to the system. The benefits of forests also far extend the economic sphere into emotional and mental well-being. I think this whole COVID thing is really interesting, the value of the outdoors and having places to go, green space, it's so important. You know, just for our sanity's sake, you know, I, I totally chill out when I, when I go in the woods. Um, I need that. I think we all need it. I absolutely love just going out into the woods and identifying plants in particular that I don't know. There are really a couple of fun new naturalist apps that I love to use. Um, I love the birding apps that help me identify the birds in the forest. So I really like to geek out as a naturalist. Throughout our research and interviews, our group learned a great deal about wildfire and forests. This is because, as Joe said earlier, people don't understand forests. For example, most people would look at these two pictures of Yosemite National Park and think the picture on the right is a healthier forest. People assume that more trees is a good sign, when in reality, the picture on the right shows an overcrowded and homogenous forest caused by fire suppression in the area. Homogenous forests like this one contain mostly trees of the same species and age, leaving it vulnerable to wildfire as well as pests and diseases. The mission statement of Blue Mountains Forest Partners reads, quote, We are a diverse group of stakeholders who work together to create and implement a shared vision to improve the resilience and well-being of forests and communities in the Blue Mountains, end quote. This group facilitates action by educating all kinds of stakeholders on the most recent forest management strategies. Thoughtful discussion leads to what they call a zone of agreement, integrating science with the inputs of their members. 
Forest management is a large-scale issue and therefore requires a large-scale solution. Because of this, community engagement and education are so important in solving the problem. We need more organizations like Blue Mountains Forest Partners that understand the importance of education, collaboration, and compromise. I, I literally have never played like that. I've never, 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 I've never,